There we go. So good morning, everybody. Um, the first question that I have today is how do you um, publish the lessons that you're that we're working on so that they actually can be on a website on the internet and we will get to that. Um, right now they are we're developing the pages locally and um, they can be viewed in a browser, but they <clears throat> are not on the internet itself. So we will be getting to that and that's really a critical step in in web development. Okay, really, really critical. Um, we will be using, I believe the name of the site is Infinity Free. So if I were to go back to um, Let's see, what did I put up here? This is a new, in the past, um, the hosting service that we used for um, our class was 000webhost.com. But I don't, I think they charge now. And so what we used instead was infinity free. So if you want, you can click on that link that takes you to infinityfree.com and you can sign up. And notice that it has a little tab here for free hosting. And there is a downside to it because, you know, it will on, on your website, there will be an ad <coughs> that will um, be displayed that will show that Infinity Free is who is hosting your website. But that's the price you pay for free. And then if you decide later on that you want them to be your host and you want them, but you want to pay for the, their service, um, then they will remove that ad. And then that would be the premium hosting. I use GoDaddy. I've used it for years and years and years. It was one of the first. <clears throat> and it's a good hosting website. But um, if you want, um, go ahead and create an account with them and I can show you how to publish them on another day. Okie doke. Does that answer your question? I hope. So for right now, you can see that this page, and this is a good place to start with this. Whoops. Let me go ahead and bring that back up. There we go. Okay, so you can see that the, um, the page that they that they created for us as a template um, is simply an image that was created in Photoshop. And what we need to do is make it um, um, responsive, and that means building it from the ground up in our lessons in Dreamweaver. Um, and how, you know, what's, why can't you publish this as is? And I guess I suppose you could but it would be a single image. And the problem with this is, is that when I resize my screen, so that could be for a small smartphone or it could be for a tablet or whatever, notice that the image stays the same size. It doesn't um, scale to fit the size of the screen. So that would be a major problem. And back in the day, you, um, you know, before responsive websites, um, before bootstrap, that sort of thing, um, this might be one of the ways that you would publish a web page. It would be done in Photoshop and we could break it up into a grid and it would be um, put inside um, a table and it would remain rigid like this and it wouldn't resize. So that would be, you know, that was the, the state of, of web design several years back. So this is what we have. Um, but what I want to do now, and right now this is, we're viewing this in live view, is that I want to make it, break down the basic components for you of web design. And I talked about this the other day, <clears throat> is that at the top is generally where you have your nav bar. Okay. And navigation needs to be consistent from page to page to page. I talked about that at length the other day. And right now, the standard is that it's at the top of your, your web page. And following the nav bar is the header. And the header is where, typically where you have your logo, the name of the website, 
um, any distinctive uh, graphic characteristics that um, just, you know separate you from other graphic designers or artists or that sort of thing. And then below that is typically the main content. And in this particular instance, the main content is broken down into three columns. We have our left side, we have our right side, okay? And then we have the main content in the middle. And then at the very bottom, we have what is called a footer, okay? And if you recall, the footer is where you put the copyright information, perhaps an email address for the webmaster, um, if there is a, if dates are important um, for the content to <clears throat> indicate when it was last updated, that's where you would have it. But as you can see that the structure of a web page is still pretty much on a rigid grid. And that's what I want to talk about next is that the grids of websites are broken down into rows and columns. So if we look at the, the nav bar first, this is simply one row, okay? That's one row. Then after that is the header, that is also a single row. Then if we look at the next where the content resides, this is one row, but then it's broken down into three columns. And then the footer again is a single row. Now, what does the basic structure look like um, upon which we build this? And that's what we'll be building today, is that if I look at my page right here, you can see that what this looks like, that not much, but this is the basic um, uh, framework that you use to build, um, that we will be using to build our website in our lessons. And you can see here is the first row there is the second row, there is the third row that's broken down into three columns. And then here's the last row for the footer. So we're going to build this from the ground up. That's what we're going to do today. So <clears throat> if we look at this, if I actually go back to Green Start, and instead of looking at this in live view, if I look at this in split view, you can see, you know, that we we started when we first talked about base, you know, HTML basics. Is that um, you can see that contained within the body tag is an image, and that's it. Okay, so here's the opening tag for the body. Here's the closing tag, and contained within inside that is an image. It's 1150 pixels wide by 925 high. Okay, so that's what we have. Now, if we look at the index page that I just created, and we look at that, now you can see that it's a little bit more comprehensive. So what we will be doing here um, in Dreamweaver is that you're going to see that we'll be, we will be using Bootstrap to create this basic framework. Think of the framework as like building um, a skyscraper, you know, that, that if you strip away all the, the glass and the, the aesthetics of the building, you know, the, the, um, the visual content, you're left with a basic grid, a basic framework upon which that structure was built. And that's what you're looking at right now. Um, in order to access each of these, one of the things that you can do when you click inside here, inside um, is that at the bottom, we have what is called the tag selector. And you can see that if I click here, that that left aside is selected. If I want to select the entire row, I can click over here. And that is, you know, what would be named main, which would be used for the basic um, structure of our website. And if I want to select the entire container um, within which this is um, nested, I can select that from here and notice that as I select each one, a little orange box goes around it. And that um, if I look in the code view, you can see all of that content that has been selected. So that's what we're working with right now today. 
Okay. So um, before I do any more, in order to, to do these lessons, you need to do the following if you haven't done it already. All right. So what you need to do first when you open up Dreamweaver is you need to go to site, new site, and you need to name it. Okay. It can be whatever you want. The one that I have for me is, I believe it's Art 196, Spring 2021. And then you need to establish a root folder for it. And that root folder, if you have properly copied all of the lessons from Google Drive or from Peach Pit Press onto your computer, the root folder will be whatever lesson we are working on at the time. So if you click on the little folder icon here, it should take you, um, you'll need to find it, but you'll notice here I have um, my Dreamweaver 2017 lessons and then contained within that folder are all the, um, the lessons in there. Today we are working on lesson five. So I'm gonna select lesson five as the root folder. Every time we do another lesson, you need to switch the root folder to that lesson folder. Then in addition to that, under advanced settings, you need to select local info. And then in that, you need to establish an image folder. Now for right now, for this lesson today, we don't have any images. So it's not really critical, but we will in subsequent lessons. So you click here, it should take you to that root folder. And since I was using five, make sure that five is, you can see that there's an image folder inside here. Make sure that that is selected for your default image folder that should, that has to be contained within the root folder. Now I'm gonna cancel this and instead, um, and, and after you've created your, your site, from here on out, what you'll do is what I'm doing today is I'm going to manage my sites. And you can see that I've established a whole slew of sites that I manage. The one that I will be using today is for Art 196 Spring 2021. So if I double click on that, um, and again, as I said, the name that you assign that is local, so it can be whatever you want. It's um, it's not important, um, just as long as you can remember the site name. And then you're going to see here, local site folder. And if I click here, okay, it should take me to lesson five because that's what we're working on today. Okay. And likewise, when I click on advanced settings and I click on local info, the, the path should take me to if I click on here, there we go, images, but make sure because every, every lesson we work on has a, its own image folder. Make sure that this one is contained within lesson five. Okay. Choose and then I'm done. And then I can click okay. Now where this um, pops up is that if I switch to file view, you can see that this folder here is the one that we're using for today. This is my site. And that contained within that, we have CSS. Um, even though we haven't done much, we're going to have bootstrap CSS. Here's that green start mockup page that I just showed you. Here's the image folder with the images in it that we will be using. And I have um, an HTML file that I've already created called index.html. There's JavaScript for Bootstrap for jQuery. And there are there may be some additional resources, which is the green start layout JPEG. Okay. So every time you do a lesson, this will look similar, but it will be different. So now we can begin. <clears throat> Um, are there any questions before I continue? No? Okay. So um, if I want to create a brand new page, 
in Dreamweaver. Um, you simply go to File, New, once you've established your site. And then you have a number of options available to you. Okay. We can, today what we will be doing is we're going to create a brand new page called a, an HTML page, and we will be using Bootstrap to do that. Bootstrap for responsive websites has become kind of the def, uh, default um, and dominant means for doing so. If I wanted to create a CSS page, I could do that from here. If I wanted to create a JavaScript page, XML, PHP, an HTML template, a PHP template, I can do that from here. We don't use any of these except the HTML right now in Bootstrap. But you can also see that there are starter templates. You have basic layouts. We have Bootstrap templates, which is something that you might want to look at. There's one for an agency e-commerce portfolio. Let's go ahead and open up the portfolio one. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create and pop that open. And you can see that it we already have our nav bar. We already have our header in here. We already have basic content that's broken down okay, for us. And if you wish to edit it, you can. If you can follow this basic format for a portfolio, you can. And again, it's a matter of substitution now. It's taking their content Notice it for even for the images, they've given you the image size 200 by 200 pixels. So you know exactly um, the size that you need to create when you're in um, Photoshop or any other, you know, in, <coughs> excuse me, image editing program. <coughs> the images here are 400 by 400 pixels. Okay. And then with each of these, instead of the greeting that they've used, you're going to substitute your own content. But if you wish to depart from this kind of generic looking gray with white background and black um, nav bar, then you have to understand cascading style sheets. And that's what we're doing this semester um, with the lessons to learn how to take basic structure and build upon it and then style it to our, you know, our desired design needs <clears throat> using CSS to do so. So anyway, I can go ahead and close this. And if you want, you can look at any number of other ones. I could go to file again, new. <clears throat> Let's look at one for a product piece. So here's a product. And again, these are bootstrap templates that you're, you know, welcome to look at to try if you want. Okay. And many of these templates may look familiar to you, you know, from websites that you've gone to. So rather than in most cases for, you know, rather than build a website from the ground up, which takes time, but that's what we're learning in this class. Um, <clears throat> they'll start from a basic structure that they can work from. And what we will be doing in our lessons is that we will be creating our own template from which we will build additional pages that we'll be using for our website, okay? From the ground up. So this is what we're doing today, okie doke. So if you wanna explore any more of those bootstrap templates or any other um, templates, you're welcome to do so. But what we're going to do today, and this will be um, pretty much all that we do. <clears throat> and I say all, but it has to be done correctly in order for it to work. Is we're going to build our basic bootstrap um, framework upon which the rest of our website will um, depend. And when we're all done with it, it will look like this. Um, it, it will not kind of like this, it will look exactly like this, but it will be responsive <clears throat> and we will publish it and it will be um, on the internet for you and anyone else who has 
um, a link to your website, you'll be able to see it. So I'm going to go here <clears throat> to this page and I'm going to select file new. Okay. And I want um, a new document. And I want it to be HTML, but instead of HTML, I'm selecting bootstrap. I want to create a new file, not use an existing one. I'm not attaching any CSS because we will be building our own CSS style sheet. And then what I, I want to make sure that it says include a pre-built layout. I want to make sure that that is deselected <clears throat> and then click customize. And you can see that um, there, it's already laid out into columns and um, screen sizes um, with a gutter size in between. We're going to leave these default settings. Typically, um, web pages are broken down into default 12 columns or 12 units. That you know, they don't have to be visible. You can have one column, but that one column has to be constructed of 12 units. Okay. Likewise, if we break it down into three columns, as we've done here, it's still 12 units, but each of those columns then is four units. That if you add that up, four plus four plus four, four add, um, adds up to a total of 12 units. Okay. And it's you know a good habit just to keep the small, medium, large, and extra large screens as the default sizes here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I will create a new document. It's um, in HTML, but we're using Bootstrap to build the basic structure. Okay. Make sure that it's a new document. I'm not using anything existing. I don't want to include a pre-existing layout. And I'm leaving these default settings here, even though it says custom and I create. Okay. So I'm going to ignore that. And I'm going to overwrite it. And there you go. It's, it looks like a blank page. But if I click in here <clears throat> at the very top of the page, I'm hopeful that you can see this. You can see that I have, here is the body tag. If I click on this little blue tab here, you can see when I'm in split view that the entire body opening to closing tag is selected. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to build that underlying structure that can in, contained within the body tag. So to do that, I'll leave um, the split view visible here. And I want to make sure that body tag, that blue little tag is selected. And if it isn't, you can always do that from the tag selector down here. <clears throat> With it selected, I'm going to go up to the right hand corner in um, our, our panels and I'm going to select insert. And by default, probably what you will see is HTML. But you'll also notice that you can insert forms, bootstrap components, jQuery for mobile, jQuery UI favorites that you can customize. And uh, what we want is bootstrap components. So again, this is a basic bootstrap structure that we will be using that will lay the foundation for the rest of our website. So what I want to do is I need to um, create what is called a container. The container contains everything on that page. It used to be called a wrapper, um, W-R-A-P-P-E-R, -P -P -E that wraps around everything on that page. Think of it, of each of these as a series of nested boxes, one inside the other. And the container is the one that lies around, that, it, that, can, that holds everything onto that, on that page. But it is contained, the container is contained within the body tag. Um, none of it should lie outside of the body tag. Definitely none of it should be in the head of the document. None of it should be in um, 
you know, anything else, you know, but that body. And that's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here for container. And what it does, um, let me undo that because it didn't do that. I'm going to do it the way I wanted it. I'm going to make sure that body is selected. And I'm going to select container. And it automatically added it inside there. And you should get, um, I don't want that. You should get um, a little box that says, do you want it before, after, or nested? I want to make sure that the one that I have selected here is nested in here. Why it didn't do that, I don't know. So that will be one of the weird things. So I'm going to say container. And I'm going to hope that it works the way I want it to, that it is contained in here. Here is our container. <clears throat> OK. And now what I want, and you'll notice it here is the opening and closing tag of our container. OK. Now what I want to do and in, put inside that container are grids with rows, you know, well, rows and columns. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on here. And what I, this is the, the insert box that I was talking about. What I want the first one to, to be, which will be the row that we'll, we will be using for our um, nav bar, is to be a single column. And I want it nested inside the container. So I click on nested, and I select one row, and I click OK. And there you go. It says content goes here. Without deselecting this div or this row, I'm going to add another one following that. And that one will be for the header. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select <coughs> um, grid row with column. And again, I want it to be a single row because our header is a single row. And I want it this time to be inserted after the last div that I just created, which will be used for our nav bar. So I'm going to select after, make sure that I have one column selected, and click OK. And there you go. We have that row will be now used for our header. <clears throat> now I need to create a third row, which will be three columns. <clears throat> Um, that we will be used for the left and the right aside and the main content, okay, or the article for it. So I'm going to go ahead and with this one selected, I'm going to select grid row again. I want it after, and I'm going to leave three columns, okay? Boom, and there you go. This will be for our left aside. This one will be for a right aside, and this will be for the article that contains the main content. Now I'm ready to create one more row for the footer, which is separate. And so I'll do that one more time. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add grid row. And again, instead of three columns, I want it to be one. And I want it to be inserted after, because it's all of these are contained within the container you know, but right after one another. So I'm going to go ahead and um, create one. And there you have it. Here's our basic structure. But now what I have to do is I have to assign each of these rows and these each of these columns the correct syntax that's used for <coughs> um, um, HTML5 so that when we begin to add our CSS styles, um, style and build a style sheet that it will um, comply with the syntax used for HTML5 and CSS3. So what I need to do now um, on next Tuesday we will be building the nav bar here and styling it. So because that is going to be um, something that we add through um, Bootstrap. Um, we don't need to label it. It will be fine as is. But the remaining rows and columns do need to be renamed. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the next one down. 
and I'm going to click where it says div. Okay. Div 12. Okay. So let's do that again. There's the body. I'm going to click here, make sure that I'm doing this right. Div 12. So you'll notice up here it says column XL 12. <clears throat> what I need to do now is I need to hit Command T. Because instead of just div with the class column XL 12, instead of div, I'm going to replace that with header. Because that is one of the new um, HTML5 um, tags that we can use. So this will be header. Okay. Hit the return key twice. And now you'll notice instead of just div, it has header here. And that's for the, the second row down. The next one, I want to make sure again that the entire, not the column, but the entire div is selected, that entire row. So I'll select with the tag selector. Here is the, that column that's selected. But if I move one over and I select the entire div, then I can go ahead and you'll notice that it just says div row. Okay. Now, again, if I select again, what I want to do is I want to hit Command T. And I want to change the class from div class row to main. M A I N. And hit the return key twice. Okay, so this entire row now has a, um, a, a, a name of main, which is where our main content goes. And now I'm ready to assign each of the columns their correct syntax. Okay, now with this one selected, here is the div column um, XL4. And instead of div, I want it to be a side because that's the syntax that we use for the, um, um, the correct syntax that we use for the columns on the left or the right. So again, with that blue little tag selected here, and make sure that the entire div is selected, I'm going to hit Command, or if you're on the PC, Control, T. And instead of div, I'm going to put aside. A-S-I-D-E and hit the return key twice. And you'll notice that that has been named now. Okay. Um, if for any reason you have difficulty selecting any of these columns, you could also use something called the, the DOM over here. <clears throat> so you can see that this gives our, uh, our basic structure of our page over here. And you can see right now that this middle column is selected. So this will be for the middle or main content contained within that main row. What we want is the name of this will be the, the correct HTML, HTML5 syntax that's used is called an article. So with this particular div selected, to be able to rename it, I hit Command T once again. And I remove the where it says div. And I put in article. And I hit the return key twice to finish that. Now I go to the right column. And because it is also an aside, I assign that as well. So again, with that entire div selected, I hit Command T. And I go back in here and rename that aside. So now we have two asides, hit the return key twice. So that's been properly named. And now the last row that we have is for our footer. So again, I can either um, select it from here, cl click in there anywhere. Make sure that it is the entire row is selected okay, or the div itself. And that's what I want. 
And I may have done that incorrectly for the header. So, or the, rather the, um, let's go back up here. So I'm gonna go back up here and, no, entire row, that's correct, that's good. Okay, now let's go back down here and click inside here where it says div column XL12. And what I want to do is make sure that the entire um, that, that is selected. And I'm going to go, let's go ahead here. Um, I think, hold on here, I may have goofed. I'm going to go back here. And I want to make sure that the entire row is selected. Yeah, so it's a main dot row. And I'm going to look at the one down here. And I don't want the whole row selected. I just want, because um, we're going to leave that, the div name row. But we want, um, again, where it was selected, we want the column medium 12. So I'm going to go back here. So I am doing it right, just to make sure. So let's click in here. So where it says column XL 12, okay, I'm going to go ahead and select and hit Command T. And uh, under a new class, I'm going to name this one footer. F-O-O-T-E-R and hit the return key twice. And now we have it renamed. So now I'm ready to save this. We're really pretty much done for today. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So I'm going to go file, save as. And it will automatically save it inside our root folder. So I don't want it named untitled, but I'll name it um, uh, Lesson 5 Working File. So not to confuse it with any of the others. And you'll notice that where it's located is inside that Lesson 5 folder. That's what you want to see. <clears throat> as soon as I save that, now, if I go back to my file fold, file tab here, you can see that that's saved in here, lesson five working folder. As I said, when you have a root folder, everything in your site should be contained inside that root folder. All of your images, any CSS style sheets, um, JavaScript, you name it, bootstrap, and you can see that we already have a bootstrap component in here, that bootstrap CSS. Even though it looks like we haven't done anything, we have built the basic framework for our website. That's all I wanted to cover today. <clears throat> um, we can always go back to um, talking about the Wix website if you wish. And if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Um, what we will be doing um, on Tuesday, we'll be working on lesson six. And lesson six is really going to be um, covering um, working with the, the, um, a, a web framework. And you're going to be able to see from that um, all of the styling that we've talked that I've been talking about. So that but using this basic structure, we're going to create um, starting with the nav bar and working our way all the way down to the footer, everything that um, all the styling that needs to be done um, with that. Adding the necessary padding and margins and assigning new style sheets with color and that sort of thing. Okay, so this is just the basic content. If you can get this accomplished, which shouldn't take you long, um, you're in great shape. But then remember on Tuesday, we will be creating, you know, you'll leave this alone We'll be creating a brand new, using a brand new folder um, for our, um, our root folder, and that will be lesson six. And after we complete lesson six and then lesson seven, um, in lesson seven, we will be adding media queries. That's what this is up here. If you click any of these, um, what it does is it resizes the screen and shows you what the page will look like. Um, on the different screen sizes. So that's something that I failed to, to mention up to this point, okay? If you wanna view this in live view, you can always click on live view. 
to see what it's going to look like. And really, if we deselect this, you're not going to see anything really. Um, I typically work in split view because <clears throat> I like looking at the code to make sure that it's inserted in the correct place when I'm doing this. In addition to that, we have what is called instead of live view, we have design view. Okay. And you can see that that looks very, very different. Um, design view is still kind of a strange oddity um, that persists in Dreamweaver um, that we will have to use from time to time uh, in order to accomplish um, you know, our goals of creating a website. So let me go back here and let's see why that's viewing the way it is. And let's, um, yeah, that's not right. See, let's go back. Um, yeah, see that I have these three columns that are on each of these rows and that's not right. So there we go. If I pull it just outside of that, now it brings it back up. Um, into the three columns. But again, you know, it automatically resizes like so. So that's what um, is what happens with when we're working with Bootstrap. So I'm going to pause the recording. And I'm going to ask all of you who have joined us, um, I'll go ahead and continue to take roll, see who's here. And then um, see if there are any questions from you. And if there aren't, then that's it for today. Um, and then we will begin working with lesson six on Tuesday. Um, all of you should be working on your Wix website. Um, so that means, you know, building your, you know, I would start with a basic template and you can leave their content intact for the time being, but then that's what you need to do now is you need to take that template and you need to replace it with your own content. And that's really what will take the work, the majority of the work for you using an, um, an online um, live website builder like Wix. So let me go ahead and pause now. Recording. So the question is by Casey, how do you want us to show you um, uh, an update on what you've completed on Wix? You can do it one of two ways, either right now you can, um, I can share the screen with you and you can show me that way, or you can email me and inside the um, content of the email, you can put the link to your Wix website once you've published it. When you click publish, then all you have to do is look up at the top of the browser. Here, let me show you mine. Um, and you can see so if I do this, here's my Wix homepage, right? And it, it's all published. <clears throat> so all you have to do is click up here, and make sure it's all highlighted and then hit Command C to copy and then paste that inside um, the content of an email. And then I can click on that link in the email when I receive it and I can see what you've done. That's one way of doing that. And I can give you private feedback or if you're willing to share with everybody right now, then I can um, have I, uh, have you share your screen with, with all of us and I can turn off recording if you want and we can um, look at that, um, look at what you've done there. Does that make sense to you? Okay, well then let's do it now. Let me go ahead and share that. Let me um, elevate you to panelists. So Casey, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna elevate you to promote you to pa panelist. And then under, um, I'm gonna stop sharing. And then what I'm gonna do um, under share is I'm gonna say all panelists can share. So um, if you want now, Casey, um, you can go ahead and um, you can share your screen and let's see what you got.
Can you see it, Professor? I can see it. I can see it in edit mode. So you've pretty much chosen the format that I did, right? You you chose the same. Um, yeah, let's see it in its published form and see what it looks like. So if you click publish and then you um, go ahead and view it where it says view site, let's see what it looks like in your browser. Okay. I see what you've done. Okay. So probably the only thing that I would do where you have Orona photography um, is I would reduce that in size a little bit. Um, or do you like it centered the way it is? It's up to you. Do you have any other pages that you have created for this? Don't forget yes. you probably. Mm -hmm. There should be links to it if you have. You would add a nav bar if that isn't if that isn't already done. So what you might have to do is add a nav bar to that. Okay. Um, and then you will add pages as needed. Or, you know, yeah, if you go back to edit. Okay. So you can either duplicate the page, you can click, um, let's go to leave, leave it on your home page. And um, did you remove the navigation that was there from the start? Not that I know. No? No. Okay, so go ahead and on the plus, see if you can't cl click on the little plus over to the left add and let's see if it has one for navigation menu that's what you want you're going to add a, a menu okay so go ahead and then you can um, add go ahead and add the menu and okay. use, you can always edit it. Okay, and then you're gonna assign this page as your home page. There, now you're gonna want that at the top. So you're gonna have to decide where you have your logo. You might have to change the size of it. Okay. And maybe I would put it over to the left. Okay. Uh, it's a good place for it and reduce it in size a little bit. And then move the, um, the nav bar a little bit to the right. Okay. And you can always make it a little bit smaller. And then you're going to create new pages. So what you'll do is you'll create, yeah. You're going to create an about page and a contact page. Yes, if that's all you need, then that's all you need. Okay. Okay. There you go. Yeah, so it's a matter of tweaking it now. Okay, and thank you, Professor. Look what you're going for. Okay, does that help you a little bit? Yes, thank you. Yeah, so yeah, now what you'll have to do is under the left, the top left button where it says, um, when you click on, no, 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 not down a little bit, where it says edit. There, menus and pages. See, now you have your home. Oh, you do have an about page and you have a contact page. So you're gonna to wanna to use, um, you're, you're gonna to want to select the about page and see what that looks like. Okay, did you select the about page? There you go. There you go. Okay, so you do have one. Now you will have a link to each of those. Make sure that the links that you added up here, go to each of those pages. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, one other recommendation I have by default, they're using for the, the text, the copy, um, 
a serif typeface. Um, when it gets a little too small, I, at least from my point of view, it gets a little bit difficult to read on the internet. So I might consider changing that to a sans serif. Okay. Um, it's a thought. And whatever you change, if you, wherever you change it, make sure that all of your text then is sans serif. You know, rely, make sure that it's consistent from page to page. Um, if you like it with, because it is a nice contrast using the title about Casey Arona as sans serif, and then as a complement to that using serif type um, for your text, that works. It's a it's a good size, and I you I leave it as is if you want. It's fine, and it reads well against the dark background. So you're good to go. You know you can just leave it alone. It works just fine. Okay, thank you, Professor. Okay, good deal. Anybody else? We've run up to the 11 o'clock hour. Um, so next Tuesday, if any of you want to share your Wix progress, um, please let me know. It will be due pretty soon um, in the next couple of weeks, about the same time we complete lesson seven. And then when we complete lesson seven and it is published, then we're going to start working on, instead of Wix, um, you're going to work on a, an, in another program called MobiRise. Um, we'll talk about that on another date. Okay. So Casey, you need to stop sharing. And then um, make sure that you're no longer sharing. So I can share, or maybe I can. It go should ahead be. And... Okay, then let me go ahead and share my screen. There we go. So we've got that. Okay, so I'm back to where we were. Okay, so that's it um, for today. You guys are free to leave if you want. I will stop the recording. I'll say goodbye for now, and I hope everybody has a good weekend. Thank you. Okay. Have a good weekend. Uh-huh, you too. Bye.